In today's video, we'll be running Windows 10 on an Asus EPC-901. Alrighty then. So, I've skipped the boot up process because, as you can imagine, on a system like this, it's really not going to be all that quick. In fact, I should probably also plug in the power adapter. Because I have no idea how long the battery on this machine will last. Keep it awake there. Alright. Let's see in real time how long it takes from the login screen to actually reach the desktop. Not too bad today. The main problem on this computer is it's a measly IDE SSD. I'll zoom in on the screen here. I'll probably alternate between this and captured video so you can see a bit better what's going on. I can see now on my camera that it's a little bit on the dark side. And no, it's not May the 4th yet. Anyway, corny jokes aside. The main thing that I've noticed in running Windows 10 on this thing is that the SSD that's in here is absolute garbage. It really is. It's always pegged at 100%. And it uses this annoying PCI Express to IDE bridge in there. It's a really weird SSD as well. But it performs about as well as a, a 30 year old hard drive. Without any of the SSD benefits. Right, so it's just about finished loading the very heavy application called Windows Explorer. A few moments later see if we can get into the settings so we can take a look at the specifications six and a half hours later which are not very impressive but should still be able to run a basic 32-bit version of windows 10 pro that's what i put on here this is windows 10 pro 22h2 the latest version as of filming this video and uh, it installed without problem it just took two hours but it did eventually start up in fact let's do the old Windows pause, or no, well, actually came up just fine. Alrighty then. What we can see here is we have the Intel Atom CPU N270, which is a 1.6 gigahertz single core CPU with hyper threading. We have two gigabytes of DDR2 memory, and of course a 32 bit operating system because we have a 32 bit processor. The Atom N270 will not do 64 bit. For that, you need to upgrade to the later uh, 400 and 500 series of Atoms and uh, beyond those will work with the 64 bit as well not that you should but that's a whole different kettle of fish all right let's get it to task manager i do intend to not make this video 30 minutes long but if we <laughs> i want you to feel the performance of this system under windows 10. I'll also do a follow-up video on this running Linux, of course, because that's what uh, most people probably want to know. Can you still make a netbook look this useful with something like Linux? It's not that much more performed, by the way, under Windows XP, I've noticed. It's not great either, but it's a lot better than Windows 10. But if you want to be safe and still do something online, some basic things, we'll see if Linux is a better alternative. I'll uh, look into that a little bit later. Right now, our CPU is pegged. 96% service host local system well it better not be trying to download updates because this will not this will not survive updates <laughs> oh dear okay let's see if we can get online let's open up Microsoft Edge while still loading weather information Hasn't even completed that yet. At first I was contemplating on installing Windows 11, but then I looked into the details and yeah, Windows 11 doesn't support 32-bit architecture anymore. So that was a no-go. So I guess, well, Windows 10 22H2 is the next best thing and that's still available on 32-bit. So here we are. Should you run Windows 10 on 32-bit hardware? Definitely not. I mean, it would probably run better on Athlon 64. 
In fact, I do have some Athlon 64s, so we might try that in the near future. Just for the heck of it. Might even try to install Windows 11. That would be fun. Windows 11 on a uh, Athlon 64 from 2004. Hmm. I feel a video. I can smell it from here. Right. Let's go to the website that is the most improbable to run. It's, uh, you may have heard of it. It's called YouTube. It's where idiots like me put dumb videos that nobody watches online. So, well, I guess. Microsoft Edge is completely unresponsive. Well, I do have a lot of prog programs open. We have like Explorer open and like the existence of the operating system in the background. It's pretty tough on a system, right? Well, I guess we'll just wait for this to load. Be right back. 2,000 years later. It decided to, uh, to respond again. And it's now loading YouTube.com. We already have outlays of all the... Outlines of all the different video thumbnails. I don't have very high hopes of them actually loading eventually. Well, maybe if you wait for a couple hours. And it appears to have stopped. Alright. I guess what we could do... Let's go to the old handle for this channel. I guess that's... Oh, God damn it. Let's see if it wants to load an individual channel or not. This page isn't responding. Well. Right, so apparently it was frozen because we have to consent to Google to collect all of our information. Before you continue to YouTube. Oh yeah, just accept all. I'll wipe the system anyway. I still somewhat have a soft spot for these old systems. The very first laptop I bought, new, with my own money, was an Asus netbook. It was an EPC, like this one, but it wasn't a 10-inch one. A bit newer, Windows 7 starter, which I replaced with an illegal installation, of course. Pirated, yar har, of uh, Windows 7 Home Premium, because I couldn't stand the look of Windows 7 starter with the uh, without arrow. So I decided to upgrade it to Windows 7 Home Premium. I had the only fancy arrow effects. I think had NVIDIA Ion graphics in it. It was great, honestly. That uh, that actually had a full-size SATA slot in it, so you could install an SSD if you wanted to. At the time, SSDs were still pretty expensive. We're talking 2010 when this happened. And, um, yeah. It came with a pretty speedy hard drive. I remember that system booting up in about 15 to 20 seconds. And that wasn't bad at the time. That had an Atom N455, I want to say. I think it was a dual core with hyper threading at 1.5 gigahertz. Eventually, I found some software that could overclock it. I used to run it at like 1.66, and that worked fine, which was cool. The only downside was NVIDIA Ion 2. There was a bit of a disagreement between Intel and NVIDIA. So they decided to cut down the Ion 2 GPU to just a single PCI Express lane. And that did a number on that GPU, because it couldn't run anything at all. Alright, actually loaded my channel. That's, that's something, I guess. Uh, let's see if we can mute the sound. It's probably a bit too much to ask. Uh, it's, it's starting to somewhat respond now, that's good. Which is a really old crappy video of mine. I think it's not even full HD yet. Should be a good test though. Eventually. Loaded the proper page title, that's something. There we go, buffering. Eternity later. Ah, I love that old intro. That was good. Good times, man. Alright, so it's buffering. Oh yeah, look at that. That's some high detail video. That's some proper high detail video. It's playing. It's more than I ever expected. It's even buffering ahead. Wow. 
Let's go full screen 240p and watch that frame rate. I know our people are probably going to yell and say, install H264 or Fi. Yeah, but the GMA950 from Intel doesn't do H264, so eh. There's not much use there. Yes, we went full screen. Gorgeous. Gorgeous. I mean, the buffer seems to fill up just fine. It's just that it can't even keep up with the buffer just to play. Damn. Well, I guess that concludes that uh, it can't do YouTube 240p anymore under Windows 10. We'll give this another shot under Linux in the next video. And then we'll see what's what. I'll see what uh, version of uh, LXDE-based distros I can find that still support 32-bit. I'm guessing just plain old Debian would do. Um, but I'll have to wait for the next video. Hope you enjoyed this one. I thank you all for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one.